Good evening, good evening, family. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Prime Time. Prime Time on <laughs> Seeds and Berries LLC. Prime Time on Facebook. It is 8 p.m. Saturday night. It's Prime Time, family. Welcome to Sidewalk Talk. So this is the fourth episode. The fourth episode of somewhat new series, right? But the season, you know, the series premiere we already did in our four episodes in and so welcome welcome to sidewalk talk so sidewalk talk is an online platform where we have real talk about the streets of north new jersey right we are trying to gain insight and trying to get a better understanding we're trying to clarify misconceptions about the streets of Newark, New Jersey, and we wanna get a call to action, right? Once we understand and once we clarify the misconceptions, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to help, right? That's what we're here to do um, on tonight. So if this is your first time tuning in to Sidewalk Talk, I wanna take this opportunity to introduce myself. So I am your host, your esteemed host, Aaliyah Berry. Um, and so I'm a licensed social worker um, here in Newark. I have 20 years experience ser serving ages zero to 60 years old in a variety of settings. Um, so I've been in daycares and schools and correctional facilities and summer camps, after school programs, group homes, shelters, right? I've been in a variety of different settings um, serving a variety of different people. Um, and so I'm a community-based social worker. And so what that means to me is the fact that this social work thing is a lifestyle, right? It is oftentimes bigger than the four walls of an agency. Social work does not always happen nine to five, <laughs> right? On an agency's clock. And so what that means to me um, is that I often find myself in baby showers and graduations, but also at sentencing hearings and funerals. Um, kind of goal setting on the sidewalk, which we're gonna talk about today, um, and hugs at a red light, right? So this is community-based while still, of course, adhering to professional boundaries, right? Um, so I currently work as a consultant um, with Seeds and Berries LLC. Um, I do program design, training, and direct clinical services with schools, um, nonprofits, and government facilities. Um, so you can keep in touch with me. So I have my information right here. Um, so you can follow Seeds and Berries um, on Facebook and Instagram. You can find me on LinkedIn. Um, and you can find out more about my services on my website at seedsandberries.com. The exciting part about the YouTube channel, which is pretty much new because this Sidewalk Talk series is on the YouTube channel. So if you missed the first three episodes, go check them out, right? Um, if you happen to miss this one live, then go check it out on our YouTube channel tomorrow. Um, definitely like and subscribe to the YouTube channel um, and, you know, check into the, the episodes that you may not have seen or this one if you miss it live. So um, that's pretty much enough about me. I want to break down a little bit about Sidewalk Talk and what this platform really is, um, kind of uh, what our goals are to do tonight, right? So number one is it, those of you who don't necessarily know me or don't necessarily know the work that I do, um, I oftentimes serve individuals who are unheard or misunderstood, right? Sometimes they're not heard at all, and then the ones that are heard are sometimes misunderstood. And so what happens is, uh, you know, those groups of individuals um, oftentimes are like so misunderstood by the community that a lot of assumptions and judgments are being made about entire groups of people in our community. And so then these assumptions go forth. And so these people end up getting alienated from the community. Um, and, you know, that's an issue, right? So the assumptions are, are happening. Um, and, you know, then that becomes a cyclical issue um, when they, you know, burn down the village to fill its warmth. Right. And so continuing to vilify individuals that we don't necessarily understand is an issue. Right. Um, and so, you know, that's kind of goal number one. Sidewalk talk looks to have real talk, real conversations about uh, clarifying misconceptions. Um, so number two is a platform um, kind of sometimes for providers and, um, you know, for us to be able to kind of validate each other um, in a way that sometimes we don't necessarily get to do. Um, so at times, like it can be rough out here and it can be a little bit traumatizing. <laughs> 
<laughs> to be very honest. And so it's, you know, a nice place to be able to hear other people talk about the realities that we find and the truths that we find, um, you know, out here on the sidewalk, right? And so number three is to be able to lift up local organizations in Newark, New Jersey that are doing the work. Okay, there are some amazing, amazing um, organizations here in the city who are really doing powerful work. And so this platform aims to lift them up um, and to be able to uh, give them an opportunity to help me tell the truth. OK, because I can tell the truth all day, but it's when, you know, then we we kind of bring somebody else in to be able to help me tell the truth um, and get a call to action. Right. Like I said, once we understand what's going on, we then need a call to action. What are we going to do? Right. Not email and meet about. <laughs> but what are we going to do? Um, and so that is, you know, kind of the, the point of sidewalk talk. Right now, real quick, I want to do some housekeeping. Number one, as you can see above, like, tag, and share. Okay, I have already seen a bunch of people liking and loving and liking and loving, and we appreciate that. I see it right now. We appreciate that, me and my guest, because then we know that you guys are engaged. Um, and so, liking and, and loving is, you know, that when you agree with certain things that are being said tonight, um, you know, that's a way to engage. You can also tag people. So you can also tag people in the comments that you think would benefit from the conversation. Um, and then you kind of pull them into the conversation. Um, and then the last piece is share. Share this video, right? Share this, this stream because um, then we get our message out and for larger impact and greater impact. And that is what we're trying to do is trying to share the message that we have tonight. Um, and so, um, so, we also really want you to comment, okay? We really want you to comment because even commenting shows us engagement. You can ask questions, you can make comments, you can say you agree, you disagree, you can add value to the conversation when you comment. So do please um, do that kind of as we go forth in this interview on tonight. So this interview on tonight, okay. So we are goal setting. We are goal setting on the block part two. Part two, because two weeks ago we spoke with Marsha Armstrong at 500 Broad Street, right? And she works with young people. She is at the one stop. So um, I see some I see some comments, some shout outs. Hey, you guys again. Thank you. Thank you. Definitely comment. Definitely comment. Um, so we talked with Martha, Marcia Armstrong um, two weeks ago, and that was more from a provider standpoint and from a, you know, Marcia is a street mother. So we talked about goal setting in the nail salon and goal setting in the uh, grocery store and that kind of thing. And that was more from her perspective. But how can we talk on the sidewalk? without talking to young people, okay? And those of you who know me already know that we have to have young people on this show because their voices are very, very important. And the person I have here tonight is, we would like to call him a young person forever, but maybe he's a young adult at this point, <laughs> right? Maybe he's a young adult at this point, but we need youth perspective, right? And so today we're going to talk about goal setting. How do you goal set? Um, when is goal setting a waste of time? How do you assess if somebody is ready? And all of this we're going to hear from, drum roll, drum roll, drum roll, from Marcus McLean, who is a youth advisor at Nork Street Academy. Now we're going to learn a little bit more about Nork Street Academy, um, but Marcus McLean is a youth advisor there and he is dope. Hands down, Marcus McLean is dope. I met him. Um, I probably should have met him previous to when I met him because then I found out that, you know, he was in some, some schools that I was with and in. Um, but I met him recently um, where we were doing a mentoring program um, between a reentry City of Newark mentoring program and uh, NSA. And so I met him that day and, you know, he's dope. So um, he has a story to tell, he has insight, and he has good understanding about what um, our young people need and how he's doing the work, um, leveraging his own personal experience. So that is what we are doing on tonight. And so with no further ado, we are going to introduce Mr. Marcus. 
Hello, hello. <laughs> Wait, we can't hear you. Oh, we can yeah. now. We can now. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Wait, test one, two. Go ahead. Two, one, two. Yes. Okay. <laughs> we had we were doing some some audio checks before, but good. We can we can hear you. We can hear you. It is so good to see you. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Happy New Year and all that. Obviously, we talked right before this and we talked before our show today, but I'm so happy um, that you're here and you're very worthy of the platform. So let's get right into it. So um, well, how about you just start by kind of introducing yourself to the audience um, so that they understand kind of where you're coming from? Uh, well, where to start? Uh, oh, well, Beauty Academy. Um, before I went to I picked out of both those schools. Um, do the things, fighting and all that stuff. Um, but do that. I was selling. Um, but from, from that, I got arrested at the age of 19. Uh, went down to Carpenter, came home, finally parole. Uh, again, can I say, um, graduated with a we program weeks. Um, so the rest of the, I helped my other classmates with from that, that helped uh, and me working on the outreach and now I'm a youth. Okay. Okay. So let me, let me say, I don't know. Um, he's cutting in and out. Yeah. So take the headphones off and we're just going to see, this is live folks. This is what <laughs> this is live. Like if we were on CNN live, this is what this is. Um, so go ahead and just, we're going to go ahead and talk again. Go keep going. Am I good? Yes. Much better. Okay. So, I don't want to necessarily tell your story, but I was hearing pieces of it, and then I kind of know what you were saying, but the audience might not. Um, so go ahead and just quickly repeat that for us. I'm sorry. Okay. Can you hear me? Like, yes, everything? super good now. Yes. All right. Okay. Um, well, I went to Irvington and Eastside. I kicked out of both those schools for skipping, fighting, and everything like that. Um, from that, I uh, went to Fast Track, but I wasn't really focus in fast track. I was still outside selling drugs, stuff like that. I got arrested for uh, violating probation, robbery, and shooting. Uh, I went down Yardsville. I did some time down there. Came home. Still wasn't focused, you know. Um, violated parole. Came home. Got with NSA. It's a 12-week program. Graduated from there in eight weeks. Um, I got my outreach job. Within a year, I got promoted to my youth provider job. Yes. Okay, good. I'm so glad you weren't choppy right there because we got all that. Yes, we definitely got all that. So first, I want to rep NSA, right? North Street Academy. <laughs> um, but you know what is, is interesting, Marcus, is just like the way you kind of recap that whole story right in about like three and a half minutes <laughs> and yet and yet like any uh, anybody who really understands the gravity of what you just said right is like so it's like 30,000 million minutes right and like and there was a lot of ups and downs kind of in that story um and just kind of for clarification, because there are a lot of people in the audience who may not be familiar with some of the places you just said. So fast track is like alternative ed, right? So like once yeah. you got kicked out of those schools, you weren't allowed to go to other schools. No, after I, couldn't, that? I couldn't go to no North public school, like no North public school. Okay. Okay. Right. So then fast track is like alternative education where right. you can still get a diploma and a whole bunch of other really good things which we're going to talk about um and then um when you said yardsville so that's a new jersey state prison right yeah okay and then you came home you said you still weren't quite ready he said yeah. he made a little face like <laughs> right and then and then after that because then we're gonna i'm gonna drill into these pieces of your story as we kind of talk about goal setting today well at the yardsville i was outside as well but mm -hmm. um Ali was doing outreach 
and he pulled me to NSC, and that's how I started my transformation. Absolutely. Absolutely. So then, um, and then NSA, you said was a 12 week program, which we're going to get yeah. deeper into what NSA does as well, because we want to lift up the local organization. Um, so it was 12 weeks, but you graduated in eight. Right. right. <laughs> I heard that part. <laughs> right. Um, and then um, outreach for NSA and then promoted to youth advisor, which is your current position. Right. Okay, snap it up, audience. Snap it up. I need some likes. I need some hearts. Because <laughs> that is quite a journey of transformation. And I also want to be clear, like, that the journey of transformation is, is ongoing, right? I'm still on my journey of transformation, and I'm 36, right? The 90-year-old grandmother is still on her journey of transformation, and so are you. Like, the journey of transformation, we never arrive, but it's been quite a journey. So we salute you, and we honor um, and respect um, your journey thus far. So I just want to say that. So help us. Un so now I want to kind of go deep into, I see some snap snaps and some likes likes. <laughs> People are typing out snap. <laughs> so when it comes to goal setting, right, within that story right there, um, how, like, at what points were people whoever the people were, you can name them or not or whatever, but like how were people entering into your life and trying to goal set at what point? Like what points were people coming in and goal setting? I said for the most part, like the most impact that the only person that had real impact on me is like Mark C. Mm -hmm. C. I was like 16 at Fast Track. I was on a bracelet. Like he, he, he tried to tighten me up a little bit. Like, um, <laughs> He was more of a super professional, suit and tie, cardigan every day type of guy. Like, I wasn't, I'm a sweatsuit guy. So yeah. Was, <laughs> like, uh, but yeah, he, he, he tried to help me. And he was trying to goal set with you. Yeah, right. Yeah. So then it's like, okay, like, okay, bro, I see you on the bracelet, right? You come to school every day because you on the bracelet. Right. Okay. Um, and what's your short term, long term goals? Is that how he came at, at it, or was he more like building relationship? He, it was, it was sort of both, but I didn't have any. I was, I was, I'm just trying to make money every day, you know. Mm -hmm. But he mm -hmm. tried to make me see beyond that. Mm -hmm. So what I hear you saying though is that your goals at that time was not the goals that he was expecting of you, because your goals were still to get to the bag. Was still right, to yeah, get money, right? Because right? right. you just said I was focused on getting money. Well, guess what, Marcus? That's a goal too. <laughs> right, <laughs> I'm just saying. You. I'm just saying, right? And so we did talk about that two weeks ago, like with Marsha, which was like, we're trying to set these goals. And like, if somebody else has a different goal than what you're trying to set, like, oh. yeah. So well, I guess even further than, than Mr. C, like, was there other people that would come in at different points in the journey that was like, hey, let's go set now. Hey, where are you at now? What's up with goals now? It was it, teachers and, and, and stuff like that, but more so like coaches. Like every time I make me play basketball, it's because I'm six, six, like I'm tall, lanky, like, but I was more into like politics and stuff like that. Like, mm. you, you can't make me want to play basketball. I was great, I was good, you know. Mm -hmm. but, Mm -hmm. It wasn't a main focus of mine. Just because you want to become a millionaire, like you, uh, <laughs> right? So that's like trying to force a goal on somebody, kind of right. based on your height. Yeah. Is that it wasn't individualized? Uh, so yeah. tell me, like, really tell us, like, help us really understand how those conversations would go. Like, somebody would ap approach you, somebody that had a relationship with you, not like a stranger, but a teacher, a coach, you said. So somebody that already has a relationship comes to you, wants to talk about goals. How would they come to you? Like, oh, you know, you should really play basketball or. Yeah, like, bro, like, you're so tall, man. Like, like you know, where's the height? If I was your height, I'd be in the NBA. Like, you should tell me uh... If, if you were my height, you're, but you're not 6'6", six, six, you're 5'3". <laughs> but you're I mean. not. Right. Yeah. But you know what's important about what you just said is you said, if I were you. Right. But you're not me. Right? And at what point is you going to ask me what I'm trying right. to do? That's all you got to do is ask. <laughs> That's all you got to do is ask. I can't even set goals for me if you didn't ask for my input. Dang. How can you set goals if you don't ask my input? Just if you put in yourself in my shoes, I, if I were you, I would be a basketball player. Um, so who ended up like 
would really ask you though not who but like then how was that like if they would ask you and they're like oh what you're trying what are you trying to do if you were still trying to get to the bag let's say at that point in your journey of transformation right you were still outside yeah. is what we call it right outside right, <laughs> right? right. you yeah. were still outside and people are approaching you like what you trying to do what would you tell them i'm very curious i'm trying to be an entrepreneur trying to own my own business and stuff like that like basically trying to get more money mm -hmm. like, Mm -hmm. But looking back at it, were you an entrepreneur then? Yeah. yeah. You weren't an entrepreneur? I mean, sort of, kind of, I would say, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I could sell water to a well, you know? That's you know? right. That's right. right. That's right. And so it's a matter of what product you're hustling, right? But right. your entrepreneurial yeah. skills yeah. were definitely intact at that time. Absolutely. Facts. Right. So... But you would tell people, oh, yeah, I just want to run a business. And, they, and then they would say kind of what? Oh, what kind of business? Do you know how to get an LLC? Uh, it was stuff like that. I, I, it was 16. I knew nothing of. Mm -hmm. like, they was trying to plant seeds, you know, mm -hmm. trying to make me go to school and learn. Mm -hmm. I was more of let's go outside. Right, right. So then they were planting the seeds, right? Um and if they were, you know, um, if they were saying, here's how you go do an LLC, right? They're giving you the information. And, you know, I'm asking this like on my own behalf, but also on the audience's behalf, just us right. trying to understand how to really goal set appropriately, because yeah. I can give somebody, I can give a young person the website or whatever to go do an LLC, somebody that right. is outside, right? Right. But... Did, let me ask this and not assume. Did you ever go and get the LLC? No. Okay. You can, then you my can tell me to do it, but yeah. you have to come really do it with me to make like let me help me uh, assist me. Ah. All right. You can... Got it. So here's the website. This is how you do an LLC. I need this done by Friday. Then Friday comes, Marcus, Marcus, after math class, right in the hallway. Right. Marcus, right. Marcus, the advocate counselor, right. Did you do your LLC paperwork? No. No. He just, he's just unmotivated. He's just unmotivated. He's right. not serious, et cetera, et cetera. What do you say to that? I'm, uh, I wasn't motivated about the objective that you made for me. I'm, I'm not. Like, I'm focused on something else. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then I did kind of ask you this in the pre-meeting because what we talked about setting and what you also just said is support me, right? We can yeah. set goals all day. We can set them. We can set them. We can set them. But if you don't support me through it, right. then like if it's not done, it's because you didn't support me through the goal, right? And then oftentimes we do as providers. Right. We say, oh, they're just unmotivated, which we're going to get to assessment. Like, how do you assess your young people that you're now in charge of? Right. We're going to get to assessment. But, you know, oftentimes, oh, they didn't do it. They didn't do it. And like, are we going to discharge them? Are we going to walk away as right. providers because they're just not doing it? But what you just said was you got to look inward and support me through the actual goal. Um so if you, I think my question really is like, you were focused on something else. Was it a waste of time? And I asked you this in the pre-meeting <laughs> in full transparency. It broke my heart audience, <laughs> but we're right. here with it. We're this, cause this is real talk. This is real talk. The question is if you were so focused on other things at the time, right? Was it a waste of time to goal set with you? Uh, back then, yeah. It, I'm I'm sorry to say it was a waste of time. I wasn't really trying to like better myself. I was trying to better my pockets. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't focusing on family and stuff like that. I was mainly on getting high and fly and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we get to the root of what you're actually looking for, right? If I want to get fly and I need to get money, if you're a goal setter had found creative ways to still get that done, would you have been interested? Absolutely. You sure? Because we know people if, that trap after work. If 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 you if you know that I I hustle, 
like teach me another hustle like print some t-shirts out and tell me to sell them stuff like that like teach me another trade of the same trade that i'm doing what if it doesn't make as much because I come across that all the time. Like, Miss Berry, t-shirts ain't going to get me what I'm getting right now in an they, hour. They, it's a street saying slow money is better than no money. And, and oh, no wow. money because that fast money going to lead to no money when you let bags <laughs> <laughs> locked right, up, right? right? You're not making no money in the cell, bro. Right. Okay. Okay. So that is what you would say to a young person that's like, you want me to do what? Like, I'm not, no job, no t-shirts, none of that is going to, it's not going to um, get the same that I'm making outside. That's what you would like, say uh, to them? If I would ask them, like, that, like, let's be realistic. Like, if what you making, bro? Oh, I'm making a band. A right, band so, for the audience is one thousand dollars. Oh yeah, thousand yeah, dollars. <laughs> go ahead, we gonna translate as we I'm go. Making, go ahead. I'm making a band. All right, so if I could get you a job that you could get that, would you do it? Yeah. All right, so now we are gonna Google jobs that make a thousand dollars each check. Uh, X Y Z. So that's about fifteen, sixteen dollars an hour. Which job? Sixteen dollars a job. Mm -hmm. Some of these jobs are good jobs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that. That kind of make it realistic for him. Like, oh, yeah, I could work here. Like, oh, I, yeah, bro, I ain't doing no bullshit. He ain't, mm -hmm. he ain't mm -hmm. trying to lowball me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that right there that you just did takes time. Right. And not Mental. everybody. Yes. Yes. And not every provider wants to even put in that kind of time. Right? Oh, no job is ever going to pay me what the streets pay me. But who's asking how much are you making? I've done a household budget with a with this right. young drug dealer, too. Right. A household budget. And, like, how much is really going to your mother? Oh, exactly. not that much compared to the sneakers, though. Oh, word. I ain't never broke it down yeah. like this. But that right. takes time. To your point. Um, and then finding the job that matches the amount of money. Right? Mm -hmm. So if someone would have done that to 16-year-old Marcus... I would have been interested. Interested or follow through? Yeah. I, I, what? I think she was trying to do that, but I wasn't really picking up on him. Like, cause we, he took me to go hire teachers and, and like men's meetings and stuff like that. But I wasn't really paying any mind. I'm thinking like, All right, I'm, a, I'm in a room with a bunch of teachers and principals and stuff like that. Like, I wasn't, I wasn't really thinking of the big picture. Okay. Okay. So. Again, that is kind of what in the pre-meeting I asked, like, was it a waste of time, right? And then you just said yes, but you also mentioned earlier, because there's a lot of providers on this um, audience right now, that that probably struck your heart <laughs> just like it did mine, which is goal setting with the 16-year-old that's not ready is a waste of time, for real. But what you also said earlier was seeds planted, so talk yeah. to us about the seeds that were planted in the 16-year-old Marcus and what did they grow into when? Um, the 16-year-old the, the Marcus wasn't really focused on graduating. But in order for you to get money and get a good job, you have to graduate. Mm -hmm. You know I mean? mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they, they planted the seed of school school being the main focus mm -hmm. but i wasn't really like i when i came home from prison that's why i'm really kicked up on school like yeah i gotta graduate because i need money i need real a real job because how long did you serve in in prison two years two years um and then came home with your mind on on diploma money money regardless like what was the goals oh, like when you came home? What was your goals looking home, like? When I, I really wanted to graduate. Like that was my my main goal, graduation. But I was just jobless. I mean, I was jobless, no skills, no no nothing. So I had to, I had to. I was still outside, but I mean, graduating was my main priority. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, because graduating is the biggest goal like so i've seen i've seen young people especially because i work you know with fast track as well and with the opportunity youth network so i'm, I'm clear on what that kind of looks like is like sometimes is the diploma such a big goal that i can't even multitask with other stuff for the most part um some of us don't see past high school 
So that's a, a that's a big goal for us. Mm-hmm. That was a short term and a long term goal for me. Mm. Mm. Short term and long term. Explain that. Explain what you mean by that. Oh uh, well, being as though I graduated at NSA, it was an eight week process, so that was short. But I didn't never think I was gonna graduate. That's why I, I graduated at twenty twenty two years old. I mean, so it was supposed to graduate at eighteen. That's that's graduating college at age, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So. But it was, and still, late is never too late, right? Yeah, I want right. to be super clear. Um, you know, it's eighty year olds getting their diploma right now. You know, like high school diploma as well. So it's never too late, but. When I hear you say short, t- the diploma was my short term and long term is if I could. And I've heard young people say this, like maybe this isn't where you were at. But like if I could get that diploma and, and what I'm about to say is deep, but it's real. And I've heard it is like I could die happy. Yeah, I'll be good. I'll, I'll be, be good. good. Like, like my I, I life will yeah. go ahead. I graduated from high school. I got five siblings. Like I'm the oldest. So mm-hmm. I, mean, I got a. At the bar, so it's mm-hmm. high school, college, bachelor's, like, you know, stuff mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I gotta keep going. So if, right. I don't, if I don't do that, then who will? Right, and that's where you're at now. What I just heard come out of your mouth, right? I gotta do high school, college, ab- above that, above that. I am the standard for my siblings. That's you today on January right. 16 in your journey of transformation, right? The one who came home from prison was just diploma. Right. Yeah. And if I can just do diploma, then I made it enough to make it or right. Right? right. So, yeah, that's what like I with the short and long term, it's both. But then you said you were outside also. Right. And so I, it, I think for other young people in the audience who's watching it is like. Does does some people that the goal that they have on their mind is so big to them that they can't focus on other things? Like, I'm going to be outside and get money how I can, but this goal right here, I got to get done. Right. Uh, I'm saying it's, it's, it's kind of hard to straggle the fence. It's definitely call it, they call it straggling the fence, playing, playing both sides. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's, it's hard because, you know, the, sometimes the bad always outweigh the good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's how I got caught up. That's how I got mm-hmm. locked up, you know? Again. I to, yeah, I supposed to graduated when I was um, 18. I supposed to graduated that December. Mm-hmm. I got locked up on Halloween. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I mean, which was a violation, I think you had said earlier, right? Yeah, yeah, so violation. you went away two years, came home, focused on the diploma, 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 but still outside, get violated because you're still mm-hmm. outside. <laughs> like you said, right, straddling yeah. the fence. Right. What should somebody have? What was? What should they have brought to you, goals wise? Like, what conversations um, should people have had with you at that point? In your journey, I, I need a budget plan. A what? <laughs> I need a budget plan. And what do you mean by that? What did you need to pay? I, I, I had fines that I wasn't paying because I didn't have a job, but I was outside. Um, but um, uh, I needed my own apartment. I'm staying with my my grandma at, at the moment. Mm-hmm. It was just a whole a bunch of stuff. I was and I was trying to keep up with the Joneses. I just came home. I didn't have a lot of clothes, so mm-hmm. you know, it was you know, a whole bunch of stuff. Mm-hmm. So money to meet your needs. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, clothes, fines, what your grandmother needs for the house, right? So um, I think you coming in with the diploma, 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 and other people maybe saying diploma, diploma, diploma. Um, what you're saying is the the goals, the other goals at hand, like Marsha said two weeks ago, we have to understand the whole picture of the person. And if right. you understand the whole picture of the person, then um, yes. So I usually don't take questions off the comments because we, we have ours, but I have to the reverence, have reverence for the Mr. Mark C. <laughs> Because <laughs> he's like the other, the silent, uh, you know, star of the show. But so I'm going to ask his question because, you know, he, he was a big part, an integral part in your journey. So what he said was, i curious how the fear of the unknown made goal setting difficult for you or for other young people. So for you and then speak in general, what does the fear of the unknown, how does yeah. that impact goal setting? 
You always say what you don't know. You know, it that that's crazy. I never he always do that to me. Make me overthink. Um, <laughs> that's crazy. He just saw made me go off track. <laughs> that's not off know. track. That is right on track. Which is fear. Fear has such plays such a big part in us. Um, in our goal setting, mine too. There's certain stuff I haven't done because I'm scared. Like, so I don't know. For me, it plays an impact. But how about you? Right. I was like, you know how you're so good at being bad. Like, mm. you know I mean, mm. I was afraid of being bad at being good. You know. Dang, Marcus, that's deep. Like, that's like, deep. Everybody wants you to do good, but what if you don't? Like, what if you? Hey, like, this shit don't work. Like, yeah. I can't get good grades. I can't go to school every day. I can't pay attention. Like, what if that don't work? Like, what if what you want me to do don't work? Like, letting people down maybe um, playing a big role in why people kind of like straddle the fence, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So I appreciate your transparency because that was the realest answer ever from your heart, right? Like, right. real talk which is I'm really good at being bad. And what if I'm not good at being good? What? That's deep. That's deep. Um, and, and to me, so that's like also putting on like a different identity. Right. Is it like being somebody different? Like these goals that you were talking about, Mr. C or whoever, right? These goals trying to turn me into somebody and the NSA too. A lot of your young people, like, oh, you talking about goal this, goal that. You trying to turn me into somebody different? Talk to me about right. that. Like, like, for the most part, they, they think you're trying to turn them into Uncle Tom. Like, you're trying to make me into a, a blue blue shirt wearing high cardigan. They're trying to turn me into a Missy C. I thought he was trying to turn me into him. Like, I'm, I really, I really don't really <laughs> That wouldn't have been so bad, Marcus. But you're saying in the way he looked, because you said his cardigans yeah, yeah, earlier. Right, right. Yeah, he's well dressed. Like, yes, he is. Dressed. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. But you trying to turn me into you? Right. Like, he, I, I looked at him as like, the high standard because he was a, a good role model to me. Like, yeah. But I wasn't ready to be that. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm toting guns and stuff. Guns. I'm not thinking about coming to school with a cardigan on and. My click clacks. That's uh, hard, hard bottom shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I know he cracking up right now, and some of your staff is on here too. Um, <laughs> everybody who know Mr. C cracking up right now. Um, but what were some of the things that you did admire about him that you were like, yeah, I don't necessarily want to look like him, click click with the shoes, <laughs> but but I want to be like that, but not now because I'm still outside, as you said earlier. He was relatable. Like he gave me a spill. He's from North North. Like yeah, he he ran with a couple people. He went to school. He played ball, stuff like that. Like he was he was cool. He was he was cool. He's my bro. Like mm -hmm. he, he still call me bro to the day, little bro. Like how you mm -hmm. doing, little bro? Mm -hmm. Like he was he was he wasn't trying to be a enforcer. Mm -hmm. I mean, he he listened for the most part. Like most people don't listen. They just tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Right. Which, which we also said last, um, two weeks ago, which I'll just repeat because I'm going to keep repeating it throughout these episodes, which is like when a provider um, or, you know, it, or some, an adult, a mentor, whatever, is trying to tell you, right? Like that is ego. That is, I think I know best. I think right. I am the expert on you. I'm the expert on your life. Even if I sold drugs 30 years ago, I know what you're going through, little bruh. No, you don't, right? right? And just because you sold drugs 30 years ago doesn't mean you've walked in my shoes, right? You have not walked in my shoes. So you are not the expert on me. I'm the expert on me. And let me come up with my own goals. I will just shout out to Mr. C's uh, Jordan collection, though. Somebody wrote that in the audience. Yeah. <laughs> they say he don't all click clack with his shoes. He got some Jordans, too, which is true. Yeah, we got to shout right. out Mr. C's Jordans. <laughs> but, um, okay, so... There was an element of, you know, people trying to turn you into something that you feel you weren't. The fear of failure is what if I'm not good at that? Um, how do you feel about that now in your journey of transformation? I'm saying I was I was nervous. I was nervous. Uh, but I wish I would have 
woken up before I got arrested because I wouldn't have got arrested for the most part. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, but it's a journey, <laughs> right? right? It's a journey, and like we all have ups and downs in the journey. And honestly, you know, you're a credible messenger now. Right. Mm -hmm. You're a credible messenger. Um, You can go in these streets and make an impact in these streets um, because your journey was what it was. Right. Facts. And if your journey hadn't been that, you wouldn't be making the impact that you're making now. So it's also not in vain. You know, and I do a lot of reentry work and I say that a lot. Make sure that behind the wall, make sure this is not in vain. And so your journey has has definitely not been in vain. Right. Um, Yeah, no. And I'm going to do all that at the end, too. But like, um, but how do you feel about like fail? How do you feel about failure now? So what what is, for example, a very scary goal that you have right now? Let's keep it real. Uh, Well, I'm supposed to be enrolled in college. Me and she was talking about that earlier, too. Supposed to be enrolled in college. I'm 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 like, like, I'm scared to let people down. You know, I got a lot of people riding on me. So I got to really like kick up but I'm 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 nervous because mm-hmm. I got a high expectation a high expectation of yourself and then I also hear you saying other people have a high expectation of me yeah, yeah, both. okay yeah. okay um is failure does failure mean that the goal is done up no nah, it just means you might have to recalculate and try to do it all over again okay okay let's just put that on the record right Let's put that on the record because there are scary goals that we all do. And yeah, sometimes they fail. Like parts of it fail, but that's not to say the whole thing is done up and I failed and now I'm a failure and that's never going to work and everybody is so disappointed in me and then that's it. Right? Like you're, you're, it's, it, there's ups and downs in the goals themselves. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, so how do you, do you see anybody like in the, the young people that you work with, Right? Um, how do you help them overcome the same fear? Because what you said, that was a big one, which is I'm scared that I won't be good at being good. Like that's really deep, right? Um, how, how do you, do you see that in your work now as a youth advisor? Um, and how do you help them overcome that? Uh, for the most part, uh, I don't really see it. They're, they're more Mm -hmm. open with me because I'm their age. Like, Mm -hmm. so they see me as like, uh, a mirror, I have Slim did that, that I could do it too. Slim, how you, um, can we, let's, mm-hmm. feel mm-hmm. me? So I'm, I'm more of a, of a, of a crutch for them than, mm-hmm. than I, feel me? I ain't right. really, right. Like it's much less scary if Slim got my back and he did it and I could just right. follow in his footsteps. Right, exactly. Yeah, it's much less scary at that point. Okay, so let me ask you this. How do you assess whether somebody is ready, though, because if 16 year old Marcus was standing in front of you right now, which you might have some 16 year old Marcuses, right. I know I do like, right. If you have a 16 year old Marcus in front of you and then you have a post prison but pre violation Marcus, because mm-hmm. he was that was a, a Marcus right there. Right? right. And then there was the post violation in NSA in NSA trying to graduate. Right. Um, how do you assess where somebody is in their in their mindset? Are they ready? Or are they not ready? How do you assess? And you gotta ask questions. The more questions you ask, the better understanding you get with the individual. Give me an example. Uh, like I could the 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 eighteen year old market. I would ask them, "What do you want to be in five years?" Mm. That that long term goal would let me know where you at. Mm. If you ask me now, I tell you I wanted to have a house kid, uh, a mm-hmm. bachelor, it's just that and third. You feel me? But mm-hmm. back then, I can't tell you none of that. Right. It's a, you gotta uh, get to understand the individual. Right. So if he would have said, you know, and and I've heard this um, from an eighteen year old, I'm really just trying to make it to twenty one. I'm that is my goal. That's my long term goal. Is like on t- my twenty first birthday, I know I will have made it. Should we not goal set? with the individual who is not ready. I'm saying you can always plant seeds. Yes. Always plant seeds. Yes. You don't you can't boom feed somebody's steak. Mm. 
Understand? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm saying that to say, like, you can't always put too much on somebody's plate. Uh, if they're not ready for it, don't give it to them. Okay. Okay. So take, I seen somebody else put earlier, baby steps. Yeah, right? Baby so steps. take exactly. baby yeah. steps. And not try to rush somebody too fast into right. what you want. Right. Because if you're speeding, you're going to crash. Absolutely. And then, and then it goes back to the C. I knew I couldn't be good at being good. Right. No, it's self so you didn't. Right. Right. And you see, I just, I just crashed. I knew I, I couldn't do this. Right. And, and, and it's your fault. <laughs> right. You're the one that made me sign up for college. And now I just blah, 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 whatever the case may be. Um, so then though, is there a point, and we talked about this with Marsha as well, because as providers, this is a struggle for us. Like we need to wrap our heads around this. And I think everybody's style is a little different, but in your opinion, at what point do you, and we called it, we called it, um, two weeks ago, we called it putting somebody on pause, right? Mm -hmm. Um, in other places, I've seen it, you know, like being the client is exited, the client is discharged, the client right. is in active status, right? The client right. is in the wilderness, <laughs> right? Like we've called it, I've been in many different places that called it different things. Um, but then Marsha said, it, you never exit a human being. You, right. you put, we're on a big pause and hit me up when you're ready. Like at what point do you think, Describe like a circumstance that you would say, okay, it's pause time or never. Well, I don't know. What do you think? It's never, you, you never actually leave the person like she said, but when a person feels like they don't need you anymore, let them go. But anything that you plan in is always going to be there. Like all of goals and, and lessons she taught me, I was downstairs, I thought about them, I came home, I thought about them. I still think about it to this day, you know, like it's, it's still there. Mhm. Mhm. The things that he planted in the 16-year-old Marcus. Right. Right. Even though there was a 2-year pause basically for you. Right. Although somebody kept in touch through the yeah, 2 I, years too. See real me. Yeah, he was on JPEG. Yeah, he, <laughs> he was there. <laughs> so, you shared that in the pre-meeting, right? Because there is a, a an extent to the extent of keeping in touch even through the pause. Right. You know, like, hey, hey, how you doing? Just a quick ch check in. Absolutely. And I still right. I still believe in you. Right. Absolutely. Like I believe in you and I'm still here and I'm still ready when you are. You know where to find me at that point. Right. Like, you know where to find me um, because they do know where to find us and they do know that we care and I'm ready when you are. Right. Um, so tell us about a success story that you had either from NSA um, or during outreach, um, a success story that you brought a young person from point A to point B. And no, no names or anything like that, but uh, uh, where the person uh, did, was at. Uh, when his dog got uh, a raise or whatever the case may be, I'm, I got a caseload now. Yes. So I had a 16 year old female on my caseload, you know, she was a disengaged youth going through uh, domestic issues and stuff like that, um, abuse. Uh, but I helped her get through her, I didn't help her get through her problem, but I assisted her with coping and finding ways to cope. Um, and she graduated, you know? Mm -hmm. it, that made me feel good. Yes, yes. So yes, graduating is, and I see the big smile on your face because that is, that's really exciting. And especially having been from the organization that you are now serving, like right. that's a really dope um, opportunity to kind of be Absolutely. a part of. And she was 16. Like, that made me feel good. Like, but you could tell she was ready. Yeah, she, she came in ready. Like Marcus, I'm, I'm, I'm going to graduate. I know I'm going, what I'm going through, but just, just help me. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get there. Just bear with me. Mm hmm mm hmm But what I, I was, her. yeah, and what I hear you say is coping. Because right. she had, she really just had to cope with her personal issues. She was fine with her goal. Yeah. She was headed right. straight for her goal, but she had all this extra stuff going on that she right. needed help coping with. Yeah. So once you helped her cope, then she, yeah, right. absolutely. Then it's straight to, to the next step. Um, 
So the the last kind of question is, what do you think? Because we also really try to clarify misconceptions on Sidewalk Talk because there's a lot of assumptions being made about individuals um, in the community, right? Um, and so we want to clarify those misconceptions. So to bridge the gap of understanding, we want folks to understand each other better, <laughs> right? Um, and because it's problematic when when we don't. And so. What do you think, the, and then we're going to get into NSA and how we can help you and help the organization support its mission, but what do you think the young people at NSA or in the streets, like where you were at 16, like what, what do you think we need to know about them? What do you think they want us to know about them? Like if all of, if they were on this show, right, what do they, what do you think we should know about them? That's like real talk the truth. Uh, ask questions. And be realistic with me. Like, don't don't be around the bush. Be straightforward. If you know I'm not gonna graduate, tell me I'm not gonna graduate. Don't tell me, oh, we have to wait to June or X Y Z. Then I'm expecting in June to hear good news. Like, be realistic with me. Mm. Uh, yeah. Even if it's bad news. Even if it's bad, you gotta help me get through the bad. Absolutely. And in general, right, for the people that say, oh, yeah, high school dropouts, and I'm using that word on purpose because we call them opportunity youth now, right? But high school dropouts, oh, they're just unmotivated. They're unmotivated. They don't want anything from life. That's why they're outside anyway. And they've been outside and see his head like, <laughs> right? Clarify. Clarify. You got to ask me. Ask me why I'm outside. Ask me what happened. You got to ask me, ask questions. If you, in order to understand the individual, you have to ask questions. Well, I'm not going to talk to them. I don't even know them. Like, they're outside my house every morning, but, like, I don't know them. What, what I'm going to go up to them and ask them why they're outside? Yeah, I reach. He said, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I do too, Marcus, and I hope everybody right. in this audience would. But, yeah. Yeah. That's what, that's absolutely. That's what you're supposed to do. As a community member. Uh, yeah, exactly. Because they are our community as well. Right? They are members of our community as well. And, you know, if we don't, if we don't even get into their whole life story, like, even saying good morning is that outreach. That's a person the whole day. Yeah, that's mm. a person the whole day. Absolutely. So that's outreach right there, right? Like, saying good morning and looking in the faces of people that we are making assumptions about, right? Um, right? So as we wrap up, right, tell us about NSA, right, the mission. We've been talking about them kind of the whole time, but North Street Academy, tell us about the organization um, and then, like, how we as the audience, we have a lot of action steps. We did throughout this thing, we've been talking a lot about what we can do to better goal set with young people. Um, but... Uh, what does NSA do and how can we as the community support y'all mission? Uh, North Street Academy, we engage the disengaged youth, boys and girls, ages 16 and 24. Um, we help them get the high school equivalency, uh, trades if they're interested. Um, we do community service um, and things of that nature. But just help them get, get back into the community and, and show them that they're not a high school dropout. Like, and and it's more better like okay okay and how can we support the mission like if we want to if we want to um help connect nsa to people like how can we help support nsa um this monday we're having an open application enrollment this monday 208 chat with you can send uh any disengaged youth they have to be um out of high school for at least a year okay you can send them over we have an um, enrollment okay for the next and cohort right yeah, for the next cohort. Okay, because they come in cohorts, and so the next one is open. And when does the next one start? Uh, uh, early February. Early February. So it's outreach for the rest of the month, open house on Monday. Yeah. Okay, all right. So thank you. Thank you, thank, thank you. you, thank you. And I just, you know, I said this at the beginning, I said it in the middle, but I'm going to say it again, um, is that like we as a community and we, you can also, you'll see the comments kind of um, afterwards, but like there's a lot of people supporting you, Marcus, um, 
And like, I see a lot of your former fast track teachers in here, <laughs> you know, Mr. C, Ms. Watkins. I mean, there's like a lot of people. <laughs> And I, I, yeah, there's a lot of people um, supporting you um, in this community and people that know you and people that don't know you. And like, I just really want you to know that like, we are rooting for you. We are rooting for you and we honor your journey of transformation, the ups and the downs and the downs, you know, allowed for the ups. Um, and so none of it was in vain. And the fact that you're like now a youth advisor and you're continuing to grow and continuing sure. to shoot for the stars. I mean, the community is proud of you. Thank and you. I just want you. you to know that. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. I appreciate you having me on the show. Yeah, no, the, worthy, more than more than worthy for this conversation. So thank you. Thank you. Um, and uh, yeah, they're all saying we're proud of you. We're proud of you. Proud auntie over here, said Ms. Watkins. <laughs> 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 and so, um, so yeah. Thank you all. Yeah, so we're rooting for you. All right. So have a good rest of the night and we'll talk soon. You, you too. Thank all you. All right. Bye. Wow, family. Wow. That was a beautiful, beautiful um, conversation with Mr. Marcus McLean from Newark Street Academy, youth advisor. So real quick call to action, right? Call to action because these conversations need to come out with action steps. We are not only emails and meetings and, you know, these conversations touching our heart. And then we go back to exactly what we were doing <laughs> right on Monday. Um, these are, you know, we want a call to action. So we hear relationship building, right, from Marcus. We hear be realistic with me. We hear be transparent with me. We hear assess my whole life, right? We hear don't tell me what I should be doing. Don't tell me your goal for me, right? Assess my whole life. Seek to understand me. Seek to understand me. Seek to understand what it is that I want to be able to do with my life um, and how I can get there. And if I'm ready for that at this moment in my life, right, um, is the goal in front of me so big that I can't see anything else? That may be the case, as he said, kind of diploma. Um, so um, he said an individualized, right, just because I'm tall doesn't mean I want to play basketball. Right. Um, you know, not trying to put, well, if I were you, I would do this, this and this. And I know where you are. I've been there, too. That's all ego family. And we talked about that two weeks ago. And you can hear from Marcus how ego then has an impact on the young person that we're trying to goal set with the fear of failure. The fear of failure, um, you know, for that question to be posed on tonight and for him to answer that as transparently as he did. Um, let's ask that question. Right. Let's ask that question out loud. And then if we have relationship enough, then the young person or adult, myself included, I'm scared about some stuff, too. But if you ask me, then I'll say so and then validate me. Right. Go down to the depths of where that fear comes from and validate me. Hey, that's totally understandable. Can we acknowledge our fear and do it anyway? I got your back. Right. He talked about support me. Don't just give me the LLC um, website. Get on the computer with me and help me do it, right? So support me through this goal setting process. So he gave us a lot of action steps, action steps from his viewpoint and through his journey and goal setting was a whole thing throughout his journey. Um, so we appreciate him. Kind of the other action step is right here, which is refer a young person to Newark Street Academy. If they need a diploma, if they need mentoring, self-directed leadership, community service, knowledge of self, knowledge of self, um, then they do have a house now, which is on 208 Chadwick Avenue. Um, they were in the Marion Bolden Center, but, you know, COVID and all that. Um, so they now have a house, which is pretty dope. NSA, how, the NSA house on Chadwick. Um, so you can stop by there. Monday, they have open enrollment. Monday, they have open enrollment um, to be able to sign up for the next cohort, or you can call the number on the screen. Um, you can continue to keep in touch with me um, at seedsandberries.com on Facebook uh, and Instagram, Seeds and Berries, um, and then me on LinkedIn. If you missed this particular episode, it is on the Seeds and Berries YouTube channel. 
um, with the last three episodes. This one was the fourth one. I appreciate the audience in here. I see all of you um, throughout. I, you know, I see you. I hear all the comments. It was so much overflowing love in the comments. Um, and so, you know, and I see like the whole Fast Track family. And so I appreciate y'all. And I know Marcus does too. It really is a family affair. Okay. It really is a family affair. Um, so I will see you all next time. We do this every two weeks. Um, and so I will see you next time. The question is when? Ah, the question is when? So I will see you on February 6th, so February Black History Month. Now, Black History is all year. Let's be very clear. All 12 months is Black History. However, we put, place a special emphasis on it in February. And so the first Sidewalk Talk episode in February is on the role of Black women, past, present, and future. That is going to be a dope topic. My guest is a very, very powerful guest. When I thought about that topic, there's no, nobody compares to this guest on this topic. Um, so you definitely don't want to miss that. Put it in your calendar, February 6th, 8 p.m., the role of women, um, past, present, and future. And again, Sidewalk Talk is about clarifying misconceptions, but having real talk and real conversations so you can play your part. We want you to play your part. You don't have to be cleaning up blood off the sidewalks, although somebody is doing that, right? Some bodies. There's several people that are doing that, but play your part. Regardless of what it is, we all have a part to play in the community. And thank you so much for your support on tonight. Have a good night.